Hi, this is How To Clinical Research, and I'm Eric Lombert. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing CRA interview questions, and I'll be covering three types of questions uh, that you will likely be asked, or three categories of questions. Uh, so be sure to stay all the way till the end, uh, because I'll also be dis um, discussing how to potentially answer some of these questions and how to think about it. Uh, so let's get into it. To start off, uh, there's three types of questions that you will likely be asked. Uh, one of them are situational type questions. Okay, these would be uh, questions where uh, they might ask you, in a certain situation, how would you do certain things? Okay, um, another type of question, they, or another category of questions would be specific um, types of questions related to your experience. Uh, so this would be um, questions based on maybe things that you have experience in, things that you've done, etc. Um, and the last types of the last category of question um, would be personality slash like characteristic type questions. So this is kind of questions where they gauge um, your personality and how you might tackle certain problems um, or how you might uh, deal with certain types of people, etc. Um, so the first topic, uh, which are situational type questions. Uh, the, an example of this question would be, um, let's say the interviewer uh, looks at you, gives you a uh, piece of paper, and says, pretend this is a, uh, a physician CV, okay, and you are a monitor uh, conducting a PSV. Uh, what would you look for in this CV? Okay, so what you want to think about is what's important to a sponsor um, and what's important for the study okay so for one when you're when you're looking at a cv for a physician um you want to be thinking about uh first of all their qualifications um what their training is are they a neurosurgeon are they a dermatologist a pulmonologist etc does their education fit the trial that they are applying for um, you also want to look at their hospital affiliations. Do those hospitals have the resources that are needed for the trial that you are um, recruiting for? So for instance, do you need MRIs? Uh, do you need a, 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 a angio suite? Do you need um, you know, x-rays? Uh, whatever it may be for, the, for your trial. That's where the hospital affiliations are important. So I would say that those are really two key characteristics um, in, in looking at a CV and determining if a patient, if a physician has the proper experience uh, that's required and the resources that are required for the specific trial. Um, and of course, their years of experience, how many clinical trials they've been a part of, um, you know, publications, etc. Those are all important. Uh, but I think the first two, the, uh, um, the resources and um, uh, the type of educational background are going to be the two key things. So another type of situ uh, situational type questions that they might ask you um, is to explain your process for conducting a PSV or maybe an SIV or any other sort of you know on-site monitoring type visit. Um, so for instance, if you're answering the one for how would you conduct a PSV, that's where you're really first uh, getting to know a site, getting to know the staff. Uh, you know, you, you may not be familiar with, with their location, etc. So when you arrive, you got to take a look at their facility. Um, you have to have a checklist with you for all the, uh, you know, um, equipment that might, that might be needed, uh, types of staff that might be needed, um, and really just the overall experience of the staff that you're looking for. So uh, when you get there, you want to check for all, all of the equipment. Um, you want to look for calibration logs. Um, of, of everything, make sure it's all current and up to date. Um, and then you want to check with the with the uh, uh, investigator, his staff. Look at all their CVs, their GCP trainings, IATA trainings, everything else, medical licenses. Make sure everything's current. Make sure they have all the proper paperwork um, that's required for the study. Um, and then you want to gauge their experience level. You want to ask them questions or you know, specific for, to that medical field of um, research that, that the clinical trial is associated with. Uh, so, um, you know, you want to understand how many clinical trials that they've worked with in the past uh, that are related to this field. Uh, you want to understand their staff's time availability for conducting a clinical trial, make sure that they're not too overworked, make sure they don't have too many trials or too many patients, etc. Um, and you want to understand the physicians, you know, um, how comfortable the physician is uh, in research, in conducting a trial, in managing his staff. And you're really looking for red flags or things that, 
that really stand out that you know might be concerning that you will want to take note of uh, to bring back to your um, your project manager or you know whoever is your manager as, as a monitor so that's how you would explain how you would conduct a PSV um, and then of course you know for any sort of monitoring visit uh, on-site visit you're gonna have a, a confirmation letter that you send out a follow-up letter and then also a report for each of those visits so it's important to mention these keywords um, and these key steps that you would have to take uh, in conducting a PSV. And that'll go for any, uh, any of those monitoring visits. Uh, make sure you understand what's involved with the PSV, with a regular monitoring visit, with a closeout visit, because these are all questions that they could ask you, okay? Um, so now we're gonna go into really the bulk of where the conversations will go during your, uh, your in-person interview. So um, they're gonna really be focusing on your you know, specific um, topic type questions on your on your history, on your on your work experience. Uh, so one example would be, um, you know, they might ask, "What is your regulatory experience?" So regulatory is really referring to your your IRB experience. So if you worked on the site level, you definitely want to mention how many IRB submissions that you've worked on, um, your familiarity with you know conducting or you know filling out the paperwork um, to submit to the IRB to activate your site for a study, um, your familiarity with working on continuing reviews. Um, and submitting any sort of other documentation that your IRB requires, like if you made marketing materials uh, to recruit patients, etc. Uh, so you want to list that, that, that experience out for them and give examples. Every time you answer these questions, answer with example. Answer with, um, you know, I've... I've actually did this in the past, you know, with X, Y, and Z, and, you know, answer in that way. Make sure that they can believe you because you're actually giving real-world experiences to answer their questions. Um, another type of question that they might ask would be uh, to explain your system experience, or they might just ask, you know, what systems have you worked with? Um, so what they're looking for are your ETMF experience, your CTMS, your EDC, uh, so you want to list maybe some key systems that you worked with um, in the past and um, essentially that it was you know a vital key part of your job and you can kind of list your day-to-day -day experiences with those systems so they can so that they have a good understanding and gauge for your involvement and, and experience level with with those types of systems because some of them could be kind of complex and it's important for the manager to really understand um, what you know. So um, the next thing would be they might ask how many sites have you monitored or you know how many years of experience you have in monitoring. Um, so you, you know if you don't have direct experience in, in monitoring sites, um, chances are you've worked with monitors in one way or another. So if you don't fully know, just be sure to explain the process of monitoring, explain what you're looking for, um, explain how many studies you've been a part of or how many sites you actually did monitor. Um, and just give real world examples. That's the best way. Always refer back to real world examples. Um, another type of question would be if you're working for a, or if you're applying to a medical device company, a biotech company, they might ask for what types of um, device studies have you worked on? You know, so you want to be, be able to answer those questions um, on the fly. Uh, be familiar with what's on your CV. Um, refresh your memory on those trials. Look up the, you know, the, Look up on Google, like um, the medical background of those diseases that you worked on and so forth, just so you kind of be refreshed and you can answer these questions a little bit better. Um, and, and don't just say, oh, I've worked on this trial, that trial, that trial. It's not enough. Go into detail. And that's why I'm saying do your homework on the trials that you've participated in. So the next one is um, they might ask you, explain to me a typical day that a CRA might have okay so um, kind of like a day in the life of a CRA like what's what's your common what are your common um, uh, duties or responsibilities that you might be taking care of so you want to make sure you mention some key things uh, one would be um, pending items lists that's huge pending items lists are what you're going to send to sites maybe weekly or monthly depending on their activity of items that they need to accomplish before they can be activated um, also checking EDC entries, um, helping with uh, scheduling cases. Okay, so every time a, if you're in a medical device company, um, every time there's a patient, uh, you have to send out a proctor. If it's um, you know depending on your on your policy for for the company, uh, the proctor is going to be there to supervise the trial. Um, and a clinical specialists will typically bring the devices if they don't store them on site. Um, and uh, you want to be able to. 
uh, explain essentially, you know, on a daily basis, those key factors of, of helping with enrollment, um, uh, keeping track of, of a device or drug inventory, uh, keeping up with sites, uh, site documents, site level and personnel documents. So that would be uh, maybe helping out with contract negotiations, um, budget negotiations, uh, 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 maintaining the ETMF. Um, checking with core labs uh, for the the images that the sites are uploading, um, working with different departments like medical affairs, um, uh, clinical specialists, uh, legal, um, maybe even marketing, just depending on how diverse your role is. Uh, you know, you want to be able to list these things in detail as far as what you'll be working on on a daily basis um, as a CRA. But another question in this category uh, might be uh, what type of environments have you worked in or types of settings have you worked in? What they're looking for uh, with this question is, have you only worked in an office? Have you worked in a medical clinic? Have you worked in an OR, um, et cetera? Have you worked in a lab? You know, as a CRA, you're going to have to visit sites. Um, you might have to work in the OR. Uh, with the physicians, you might have to uh, work with their staff in the office, you might have to work with a diverse set of people. So they're trying to understand your familiarity and comfortability and working in different environments and, and how well you adapt to that. So um, if you have experience in all those fields, make sure you list them out. I've worked in the you know OR on this trial doing X, Y, and Z. I've worked um, in, in these types of clinics, you know, whether it be dermatology, pulmonology, um, you know, HIV clinics, etc. List them all, okay? So that it gives them a good understanding of your diversification in workplace environments. Um, so now the next uh, type of category of question uh, would be personality and characteristics uh, type question. So with this, they're just trying to get to know you. Um, they want to understand your um, the way that you handle situations. They're trying to understand your um, maybe way of working with different types of people, et cetera. Um, so an example of um, uh, this type of question would be, why should we choose you or what makes you different from the rest? And so with that one, what I found is to answer, um, with this, you want to be a little bit um, confident in your answer, uh, but be careful not to be cocky. So um, a really good way to, I think, stand out is to, Express how you are different based because of your experiences, because of what you've learned in the industry. Um, you want to be able to list, uh, you know, may maybe you could say in the number of years that I've worked, I've been able to do more than the average person in the same number of years because I've done X, Y, and Z. Uh, be able to list that off. I think that's a really good way to stand out without saying too cocky, but also being confident. Um, another one is... Uh, do you have experience with working with executives, working with physicians, you know, different types of tiers of people? Uh, because working as a CRA, you might have a meeting with a VP, you might have a meeting with a director, uh, you might have a meeting with a physician, of course, and, and all these different types of personalities and, and different levels of authority. And they want to know if you're comfortable with working with those people. And more importantly, do you know how to act around those types of people? So a big part of it is, you know, dressing. Make sure you dress the part. Make sure, make sure you look professional. Um, but also make sure you, you're going to show the way you dress during these, um, these in-person interviews. So, um, make sure that, you know, your first impression is really important. It's going to tell them a lot about you. So make sure you're dressing nice. Um, but, but when you're answering this question, be sure to give them examples of working with different types of people you worked with, um, how you've interacted with physicians, how you've, um, interacted with, uh, maybe you worked with a CEO, a CFO, um, you know, a, a a lawyer, a corporate lawyer, and so forth. Give those specific examples of, of those experiences. Um, and then another question that kind of tags along with this one is, how, how, how do you work with different personalities? You know, some doctors are looking for respect. Some doctors are, you know, just want to be your buddy. Some doctors um, uh, have, have egos, right? So you have to be able to uh, adapt to those different personalities. And it's really good to give examples of how you've, dealt with different types of people with different personalities. Sometimes it's a it's an office manager who's 
who really is just too busy and doesn't want to work deal with you and they don't have you know time to work with you maybe you give an example of how you remember that it's their birthday and you always remember that and you say happy birthday or you bring them chocolates or donuts or whatever um, give examples how you work with those different types of people and how you've been successful in navigating through different personalities that's key okay because as a CRA you're working with so many different people across the country sometimes across the globe in in Europe Canada etc um, you're going to come across not only different personalities, but different cultures. So be sure to point that out when you're answering these questions. Give examples, detailed examples of how you've worked with different diverse types of people. Um, so uh, that's about it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you found value in this, be sure to like, um, like the video, subscribe, hit the bell button. Uh, links to um, uh, my Instagram and Facebook down below. Um, be sure to um, check out the Amazon affiliate links. Anything that you click on and purchase through those links gives me a small kickback. It helps out the channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, see you at the next episode. Leave comments down below. Uh, let me know if, if uh, this was helpful. Let me know if there's any other types of uh, videos that you like to see. Um, and uh, I'm, ha I'm here to help. I'm happy to answer any questions. So I'll uh, talk to you guys soon.